Hey, Camter from Lost Forge Tabletop Gaming here, talking to you about the updates to the channel going forward, especially during these unprecedented times. The main thing I wanted to talk about first was Tarkadia Rising and the Pathfinder group. When things started to kind of heat up in March, we were planning on completing the Tarkadia Rising Chronomist Isle arc. Unfortunately, there were several factors that caused us to abruptly stop halfway through the conclusion. The first one was obviously the C-Virus uh, from Resident Evil. The second was Cameron's wife gave birth to a lovely daughter around the same time, and he wanted to take care of his family, which is totally understandable. Life comes first, and he had to sit out. So the last couple of episodes, he was sitting out... Uh, due to preparing for the child arriving. And we haven't been able to finish that series. That, that being said, I don't think we will be able to end that storyline, with all things considered. And what I'm going to do to make up for that is a recap of everything in what I'm dubbing Season 1. Season 1 is the original stream videos, with everybody at the table, the live stream aspect all the way up until the end of Chronoma Style. And a lot of things have changed between when we started the series and where we wanted to take it due to experimentation and seeing what worked and what didn't and how we were constantly dealing with problems recording and audio and all that fun stuff. So we are kind of revamping the first season and doing a recap. When we get back together and are able to record again, we don't know when, but when it's safe, we have created a group of characters that will be bridging the gap between the Season 1 story and the Season 2 story. Kind of a .5 uh, tale that is going to impact what's going to happen. I've written only a certain amount of this story, and there is a defined beginning, middle, and end. Anything in between is all going to be described by the players, and fate will decide how things will go into season two. Season two will also have a beginning mark, and depending on how things go from this point five series into season two will also affect the story as well. So there is an outline, but due to how RPGs go and how I want this to be open-ended, there's a lot of role play and improv that's gonna go into the story. So there's only so much planning I can do, and knowing this group, they're gonna find a way to derail it pretty quickly. On the card game front, I have been able to do a couple of smaller videos. We did the Ikoria Magic the Gathering box opening, which was really fun. I had a good time doing that, especially with all the cool cards that were pulled. And I want to continue trying to do some more box opening content for Magic the Gathering, as well as trying to do some deck openings for Keyforge, now that Mass Mutation is going to be coming out later in July. There is a little bit of conflict on the journey to Vault Warrior due to the fact that no competitions are going to be happening for the rest of 2020, and I pretty much have to restart my training until then since there's no available Vault Tours or places I can play at at this time, so I'm going to be very, very rusty. But it's understandable. I don't want to jump into this too soon, get sick, because I wanted to try to, you know, play professional card games. Because, you know, this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, I'm not stupid. With that being said, this update, I wanted to talk about some stuff regarding how I handled certain things of content. In the past, I've been very shy about what I did in the game industry and who I worked for. And that resulted in how I managed certain content. Mainly, you noticed I favored Pathfinder over Dungeons & Dragons, along with not talking about Magic the Gathering very often. I referenced it, but I never did a direct video about it. That was because of contracts and who I worked for. When my studio closed down in October, I had to sign a lot of non-disclosure agreements and compete clause that prevented me from talking about anything I knew about magic at the time, which was nothing. I didn't hear anything that was coming out besides what average players did. I didn't get any insight. I didn't get any advantage, anything like that. But due to how my company was owned by Hasbro, I still had to obey by those rules. So until December, I am under a contract where I cannot compete in events or else I could be liable for all sorts of claims. 
So once that contract ends in December and how the world shakes out, I'm going to try to cover Magic Gathering in a more competitive sense and do kind of the same thing with Magic that I did with Keyforge and make more of a vlog style series playing, trying to improve and work towards competitive play. And I'm taking inspiration from some YouTube channels that I can't remember the name of. It just popped up, but it was like a series of vlogs based on competing in a Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, states championship with only cards he bought through purchasing. He couldn't buy any single cards. And I would love to give a shout out to whoever created that idea. That's a basis for what I want to go with Magic and give you a sense of what the competitive scenes are like, talk about my experiences, and show the good and bad of large-scale events when it's safe. So that is kind of the explanation on why my coverage of certain games and aspects of Dungeons and Dragons was very limited or kind of obscured was because uh, at the time, just to be safe, I didn't want to shake the boat with Hasbro in case for any reason they saw something or something went big. Now that I am going to be free of that, I am no longer under Hasbro, I don't work for them, I can have a more vocal voice when it comes to things. And in the past, I was very vocal, positively or negatively, with Magic the Gathering. If you look back at my very, very old, angsty uh, Duel of the Planeswalker videos, where I was very, very harsh and acting like I was a mid-2000s Channel Awesome reviewer. Which was a theme at the time with a lot of videos I wanted to do. Now I'm a lot older, I'm a lot more critical, and I can be a lot more professional about how I approach things without having to use too many swear words, because, you know... Fuck this, fuck that, blah, blah, blah. This is where I want to kind of be more critical and thought-provoking and, and bring bring a mid-level gameplay, someone who enjoys competitive without taking it as a profession, but also not taking it as a casual play. That, that nice middle ground for those who... Friday Night Magic Warriors is a good kind of... <laughs> <laughs> description of it, but you know, those kind of people, the people who, who love to compete, who love to win, but still love the the enjoyment of the game without going too far one way or another. And just kind of cover it and, and try to give my insight from that, that mid-range where, you know, it's still fun, it's still fresh, and give my own spin on things, because there's a lot of fun things you can do with this format, and I'm really looking forward to it when things are safe. Just take a shot every time I say that phrase. That's a lot of the major things I wanted to cover in this video. It's a little bit harder to find interactions with people. I wanted to do a lot more uh, in-person board gaming. I just set up, <laughs> before all this happened, a more interesting view for the board game area we record in. I was going to start putting soundproofing in, all that stuff, but now that is not the case. And now it became my work from home office. And because of that, I can't really do any recordings, but I'm still going to try to do things. I'm going to do box openings. I want to do the Keyforge box, like all that stuff I mentioned earlier in this video. I'm not going to repeat myself. That's what I plan to do. I'm going to try to make this more active. And if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see, please let me know. I'm very flexible. Uh, I have a lot of games that are in my backlog that I want to cover. A little bit more uh, <laughs> videos like BattleCon with other level 99 games because I like a lot of their stuff in their catalog. I want to cover more of those. I want to cover some other stuff I picked up. I have Marvel uh, Champions. Just slew of games that I can record from home uh, or with people that are close by and test, you know, we have testing and all that stuff. But that's the long tangent of the plans going forward and how I want to direct this channel in the coming future. So please just stick with us. You know, you don't have to unsubscribe. If we're not putting out any videos, it doesn't hurt just to stay subscribed. I'm not going to be like, share with 10 of your friends and ring that bell and the, 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 the great guru dog will give you peace for 10 years. Not that kind of stuff. So just stick with us. We're all dealing with a weird time here. And I appreciate your patience and support through the past year. It has been awesome. We've done a lot of cool things. And I hope to do more cool things in the future with y'all. This has been Camter from Lost Forge Tabletop Gaming. Stay safe out there. And we hope to see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Take care.